Hello, my name is Yonina Curtin, and I'm Métis Icelandic poet, coming to you from the land of the Kakite Nation, Stolo, Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh, and many other Coast Salish nations also use these lands. I uh, am here as a person who has, lives with fibromyalgia, chronic pain. So, as many of you know, um, this, some of our illnesses are invisible illnesses, so I look fine. Uh, often, I do not uh, look the way I feel, and this could cause quite a bit of confusion for people. And pain is something that I live with most days, and some days it's better than others. And this is a poem I wrote to pain. It's in my book, Page's Bone, Inca's Blood. I write a lot about the body. The poem is called Dear Pain. What is it that you want from me? I try to work with you. Hot baths, Epsom salts, stretches, walks, and when necessary, Percocet. But it is never enough. You always want more. Without you, I could do so much more. At least that's what I tell myself. You are my father's voice, the one that says I am a slut. Though married, a mother, you still try that trick with me. Until I want sex no more. You take and take my passion, ability to write, memory, my desire, but each day I fight back. Take pills, meditate, pray to dull your voice, to lessen your control. Just as he would, in the night you wake me up. While others sleep, we converse. I try not to shout at you. Occasionally you make me cry. Often you make me beg. You are so like him, his voice inside me, harsh as steel-toed boots, marching, sometimes kicking, cold words, dark nights leave me sensitive to the light, so I hide. And I do wonder, as many do, uh, how much my problems with my body are related to my young life as a child, which was quite traumatic. And the other thing I'm thinking a lot about lately is aging. I'm 66 years old, and living with a chronic health condition is not easy. Uh, so this is a poem about aging, and it's in my second book, uh, An Honest Woman. It's called Surrender. Falling leaves compost, but are falling another matter. When we fall, whole worlds collapse. Our children never expect that they will have to pick us up. Yet, their turn comes so quickly. Like small children in need of rails to climb, we are suddenly afraid of heights. When did this happen? In our dreams, we are still whole, wild and woolly. We scale walls, dance into the night with our sisters. But in the morning, our body frail. Its needs come in like a wave that has traveled across an entire ocean to reach a shore. Relentless, it pounds, the sound, the force, push on us until we agree to fall. Once falling, we find grace. There is hope in letting go, and eventually we understand that letting go is not giving up. The shoreline then becomes a place of peace, of ebb and flow, where we find a new rhythm to follow. We discover our in-breath our outbreath has been deeply dreaming, will take us somewhere to float, will show us the way to be in the rise and fall of it all. I think often about um, the cycles of life and I'm in the final cycle. I hope it's a long one. And now I think we'll move into uh, something around self-harm. Self-harm has been a part of my life. I'm sure it has been for many. And this poem uh, speaks a little bit to that and also how it, it can be a bit soothing for us, actually. Uh, not that I'm recommending it. And this is called Nibbles. I have been feeding on my own body. It began with my toes. Surely no one will know this I can hide. Just one toe the big one. 
It was only meant to pacify, but soon there were urges to nibble just a little. Small bites, the way a lover might nip at your neck. Not too hard, just enough to bring electricity to the skin. Just enough to remove numbness. Over time, I needed more. The bites became blood sport, teeth marks I can hide inside my shoes. Like the snake swallowing its tail, I am becoming a circular version of myself. When in public, I bite my baby finger. I have found that I can disappear into the throbbing of digits. Like the snake swallowing her tail, I am becoming a circular version of myself. And no, I have never sucked my toe. I don't think I would reach, but I have definitely bit my finger. And I have needed to feel something. Um, and that has uh, been something that I would do. There was other things, but we won't go into all of those right now. Instead, we'll move into how our body holds our ancestors and that we have blood memory and that perhaps some of that can help us with our healing. And I don't, I'm not trying to suggest that we can heal from everything. I know that that's very controversial in the uh, world of uh, illness and disabilities. This is more about our bodies have uh, things to tell us and that they are magic and that they can help us, uh, we can learn to live with them. So it's titled, All My Relations. My body, a universe filled with glia cell mem... Pardon me, fibrofog is kicking in. I'm going to start over. All my relations. My body, a universe filled with glia cell galaxies, shooting light, bringing healing to limbs outstretched. Within my reach, a star. At my center, a galaxy. In my skin, kin worlds, painful memories, swirling next to an ocean of joy. My brothers who share the same space within the universe of my mother's body are gone, but still with me. She is gone, but still with me. All the ancestors are gone, but still with me. My body, a universe, whispers blood quantum stories, tells of time passing, transcriptional streaks of light traveling from cell to cell. An oscillating rhythm, it holds my place, calls out to the land. My body, a universe, sits waiting for me to attend to it. Within my reach, a star. At my center, a galaxy. In my skin, kin worlds, painful memories, swirling next to an ocean of joy. I've been trying to tape this for quite a few times, and I decided that I would leave in some errors and let you see some of my fibro fog as it's working its way through my mind and body. So this next poem is the last one. It's called Rooted, and it's for my niece, Gabby, 17 years old, sweet little Métis. She sent me this quote from Virginia Woolf, which inspired the poem. It's called, I am rooted, but I flow. I am a story within the stories of many. I am a paradox. One thing and then another, parts of a whole that does not know itself. Turning towards the invisible, I can see the limits of knowledge, the places where formulas dissolve into the knowing that can only come when quiet and walking in a forest, where the standing ones watch and wait for us to return to ourselves, to the new stories that are waiting to unfold. Now this one line in here is quite important. I can see the limits of knowledge. And as a person who's had a chronic illness, which has been suspect um, and has few answers for it, there are limits to what the doctors know and we need to trust ourselves. So we need to, for me, that means I need to pray. That means I need to take care of myself in the ways that my body can show me, can teach me. Anyway. That's enough for me. Thank you so much, all my relations.